Now, when playing First Bull Run, like the historical commanders, you must deal with the fact that your armies are very similar. You've got blocks of both colors on both sides. Fifth Corps. Beauregard races to the center and commands his troops to attack. We'll see how McDowell responds to this early aggressive move. Johnston's army of the Shenandoah races forward to support Beauregard's attack. First Division's General Tyler boldly falls back. And now it's mid-morning. We got him running, boys! Beauregard drives his men forward. All along on the Confederate left, Beauregard pushes the line forward. Now here's something I forgot to do, but I'm keeping it in the video so that you can all learn with me. Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah cannot move until the flanking force or some Union unit crosses the Bull Run. So on turn one they could not have moved. This unit has crossed the Bull Run. So this turn, when I draw Johnston's chit, he will have moved. And General Miles' 5th Division moves to counter the attack. Alright, I've drawn the Army of Shenandoah's chit. They moved to here, and Stonewall Jackson crosses the Bull Run. Here in the center, we have a swirling combat. This time, let me go through it and demonstrate, step by step, how this is resolved. Notice we have a flanker, and a flanker flanking the flanker. How does that work? You work from the inside out. The inside battle, the south is flanking. Now the forward Union unit was artillery. In combat, artillery fires first, and they eliminated Longstreet. Two hits on militia destroys it. Early steps forward and rolls three hits, destroying the artillery. Next, you resolve this combat, the flanking combat. Plus one, minus one. This is simultaneous, and the south rolls two hits, which destroy the Union attacker. The Union got one hit, which counts as two on militia, so it flips him and retreats him away from the combat, so he runs into this cavalry. In the second round, we have only the two center blocks left. Neither elects to retreat voluntarily. The south is attacking uphill. They're at minus one. As you can see, both sides rolled three hits ordinarily, but these two for the south are just fours. Since the south is a minus one, those count as threes and they miss. South has one hit. All of the Union's hit. The one hit drives back the Union forces and the three hits destroy the Confederate forces. You could simply say that the southern attack drove back the Union forces, but they were so exhausted and depleted, they're no longer considered in the battle. They are lost to the battle. Here's a Union attack on a Confederate detachment. Notice that with these two blocks, the Union is actually in gray and the Confederates are actually blue. The detachment gets one die. No hits. Union gets two hits. It only takes one to destroy a detachment. They're gone. Late morning. Tyler continues to fall back. Learning of the flanky move, Beauregard falls back. He laments. Man, this day started so good. Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah prepares to cross the Bull Run and push ahead. And he sends some Jeb Stewart's small cavalry force around the New Market, scouting these rumors of a Yankee flanking move. And the Union's flanking force does flanking force stuff. It's midday. The last of Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah arrives by rail. They'll spend this turn getting off the train and forming up. The Union 4th Division arrives and joins the line. Hunter's 2nd Division begins to deploy. McDowell tells Tyler to advance cautiously east of Cub Run. Johnson's Army of the Shenandoah drives hard into the Union line. They're making for the Union supplies at Centerville. Beauregard's troops steal themselves for the Union assault. Johnson's assault across the Bull Run. Not without losses, the Yankee troops are driven away. And now a most critical fight. Johnson sends Jackson's men into the Union line. All is confusion. No one is in control of the battleground. It's late afternoon. The Union lines organize and form up for the assault. McDowell unpacks the Union bags. We're gonna hold here, men. And Beauregard continues forming up the southern defense lines. Johnson's troops charge forward into the Union lines. 
Etzmus Brigade double teams to make it up and support the attack. In desperate fighting, both brigades are reduced to ineffectiveness and will no longer see action this game. Miles' division is now completely wiped out. Jackson's brigade is thrown back by the heroic New Jersey Volunteers. It's now almost dinner time. McDowell and his troops defending Centerville wonder whatever happened to that flanking force. Runyon's 4th Division recovers and attacks. Beauregard has his mounted arm assault the Union right. Tyler sends the 1st Division across the Bull Run. Johnston senses the Union Army is about to break and drives on. Hunter recoils from the flanking move, pulls his bags to safety, and charges in. And now here, just before dinner, the battle might be resolved. The Confederate left is falling back in disarray. Here in the center, Smith's fresh troops hold for Johnston. It's now early evening. Southern losses have been heavy. One more block and they break. The Union is doing okay, but to win, they'll have to start attacking. And as the South has learned, that's very costly with inexperienced troops. Johnson feels he has no choice. He must keep attacking. Only he can win this day. Fourth Division engages in a risky fighting withdrawal. Beauregard's troops escape the noose. Burnside's brigade attacks the retreating Southern troops. The rear detachment is destroyed and the rest of the troops move out of danger. It's late evening, last chance for decisive action. And here I've made another mistake pursuant to the confusion of the battle. I have placed Porter's brigade with the Confederate Army. It should be with the Union Army. Four and four, the losses are equal. Although the larger Union Army can sustain seven losses before it breaks, the Southern Army, six. They both have four. Runyon's 4th Division guards the bags. Beauregard's men fall back. With no loss of spirit, Jackson's men continue their drive. As the sun sets, there are two combats left. Tyler's 1st Division drives on Beauregard's men. Both units are lost in the fighting. Jackson's drive on Centerville. The drive is stopped. Centerville is saved. Mostly by night. The bags are exposed. Another turn, and that would be it, but they've run out of daylight. They've both lost five infantry blocks and an artillery block each. The South has also lost three detachments. At this point, it's essentially a draw. Of course, with pub battles, you can always elect to fight a second day. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see me fight this out to the bitter end. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, my Pub Battles Antietam giveaway is going till the end of the month, and there'll be a link up at the end of the video. Thank you.